To date, the story with the music box has come to its conclusion. It was difficult and take a long time, but it was very interesting. Welcome to the W&M channel. Following your recommendations, first I resoldered all the weights completely. They are now made of lead and are placed in the very end. I also threw out the resonator made from beech tree. Everything will be a little different now. I milled out two fixings for the drum shaft. And now it's time to cut them off. I decided not to use ball bearings. The sliding will be enough anyway. Making this music box took so long, mostly because I had no idea how to transfer music onto the drum, how to make the shaft, the housing and many other things. But now I have even more skills, abilities and interesting opportunities for the future. We level the back side of the fixings to fit the frame size. There is a small notch and we will fix it now. On the frame itself we milled the spaces for these fixings. We could attach them with screws, but I decided to go the simpler and easier way and used glue. Firstly, this is a special glue for metal. Secondly, I have already tested it. Breaking it off without heating is almost impossible. Thirdly, this will be some additional insulation between the brass and the aluminum. This was a walk in the park, and now we begin the fun part. We grind out the future drum to the size we need, and also, we need to figure out how to drill the required number of holes at the right distance. At the same time, I wrote down a simple melody, because with these few notes anything complex will not work. I have this editor, but jumping ahead a bit, I will say that the melody will need to be rewritten, and I'll explain why later. Now we open the same melody in another editor, and get a certain number of these diamonds. Now we simply take a screenshot and load it into the 3D software. I have created an array of holes of the desired diameter in such a way that they coincide with each diamond. We select only those that we need and copy them to a new layer. This way we get a ready-made milling program. Of course, now we transfer all that onto the drum. The mill will be only 0.6 mm in diameter, and so that it does not move around, first we go through with the centering mill. Each hole is clearly visible and now we can go through with the finishing mill. This process is quite long, but thankfully you won't notice that. I made the holes deeper on purpose, so that the pins are securely fixed. It's all worked out. Now we can drill the drum to cut it off the workpiece. Here it is important that the drill does not move around, otherwise the drum will keep trashing around. The testing shaft rotates straight, so we can cut it off. On the reverse side we grind it to the size we need. Our drum will be removable, so to not mess up the appearance, we make the fixing hole on the side at an angle. First we mail in, create a small area and after that we drill. Now we cut the M3 thread for the set screw. We wash everything thoroughly, and now we prepare the pins. Here I have this hardened wire of the needed diameter, and we will cut it to size. Actually, it's an approximate size, we will adjust later. I didn't think of a better way to do this than with anaerobic glue, so that is what we will do for now. Large expensive music boxes have a hollow cylinder rather than a drum. 
This is due to the large weight. Also, the pins are not inserted manually. Machines do it. Now I want to create one more mechanism, but this time automatically and much smaller. In the end we get this nice brush. Now we need to trim it to even it out. I haven't yet come up with a better way than doing it manually. We fix a small cutting disc at a certain height and go in a circle. After that we check and if the pins are too long, lower the cutting disc a little and go through again. So we do it many times. Check, grind and check again until we achieve the desired length. The moment of truth. Either everything works out or we put the whole thing on the back burner for a while. We just spin the drum by hand. Of course it's not the exact movement, but at least we can check. We are getting some sound, so we are moving in the right direction. But I suspect that not everything will go smoothly. This time it will still be manual drive, but we still need to make the reduction gear. It will be tiny worm reduction gear, and first we make the gears of the output shaft. We make a special cutter to create the groove. In the absence of a worm milling cutter, we will cut the threads with a regular tap. Of course, the module will not be exact, but also the load is small. I think it should work totally fine. We move the chuck to the milling machine and remove the belt from the pivot axis so that everything spins freely. We give it low revolutions and little by little go deeper. To be honest, I didn't calculate the correct diameter, but it seems that in the end everything worked out. We can cut our gear off. For the shaft again, we just use the glue. It will be alright and this is what it looks like. Overall, pretty good and the first part is already done. We take this chance to check the fixing with the set screw. Just wanted to share a great joy that come into my life. The joy is called Mitotoyo. It's like an iPhone of measuring instruments. At one point, I got shamed in the comments for using an old Chinese caliber, and I decided to upgrade. This thing of course is awesome, good turners definitely know what I'm talking about, sometimes I'll tell you more about it. Since the size of the output gear I have was arbitrary, now I need to calculate the dimensions of the input gear and type them into the software. Once again, we will out a rough cut, cut it off from the workpiece and bring it to the desired size. Well, this is where the flying cutter comes in handy. Now in the gearbox body we need to make a limiting groove that fits the thickness of the frame. This way the lower part of the gearbox will be flush with the frame. Making the driving warm gear is a little more complex. I made a 0.5 mm wide mill and we will use it to cut the grooves. They are needed for the threading tool, can enter and exit and also for fixing the shaft in the housing. The first groove is actually for fixing the shaft in the housing and we will make the retainer from a utility knife blade. The second and third grooves will be wider for the cutter to enter and exit. We move over to another lathe machine and use the program to cut the thread. We try the two gears together and everything seems to fit. We slightly grind the sharp edge and overall polish the shaft.
from this side where we cut off the shaft from the workpiece, we drill the hole and cut the thread. The thread will be M3, but that's not at all. We move over again, but this time to the milling machine. Now we make a tetrahedron at the end. On this side, there will just be a handle for rotating the gearbox. So this also took a while, but it turned out well. We measure both gears put together, and now we can calculate the dimensions for drilling a hole for the drive shaft. First we go through with the smaller diameter drill, and then a milling cutter with the diameter of the shaft. On this side of the body, we mill a thin groove for the fixing plate. The cutter is only 0.5 mm, so we are working very slowly. We combine the groove of the body with the groove of the shaft. Behind the scenes, I used a laser to cut out this small stopper. Now the shaft fits like a glove, but at the same time spins well. We tightly press one gear into another, and now we drill a hole for fixing the gearbox onto the frame. Screws and will be M1.6, and we will hide them deep into the body. We cut the thread into the holes in the frame. Also, as per your recommendations, we leveled the screw heads with the frame itself, and now they now will be flush with it. For the 1 million first time, we check how everything fits together, this time with the gearbox. We measure our square. It turned out to be 4.34 mm. Let's make a handle for it. I will be made from the same aluminum as the frame. Of course, a spring mechanical drive would be more interesting, but there are many more parts, so everything would take much longer. I checked out a website of expensive Swiss music boxes, and there are also some with manual drive. As I said, this is only the first stage, and generally, nothing is impossible. I made it a little prettier and lightened it by drilling some holes. Now we can cut it off. I quickly made this improvised grinding machine for small parts. In the last hole, we cut an M2 thread. Then some final polishing, and we install it in its place. I decided to give up on the resonator, as per your device. Now it's all one solid body. I have a block of stained horn beam wood, we will use it as material. This wood is very dense, but to tell you the truth, I couldn't find a solid piece of this wood of the needed width, so we will glue two halves together. I have mentioned at some point that I do not really like all sorts of curls and ornaments, so the body this time will be pretty plain. In the center, we mill a 2mm recess for attaching the mechanism, so that later it is possible to remove it if needed. Now we cut off the future body. We use the same wood to make a rotating handle.
Now we can glue the bottom plate into the wooden part of the body. I love all sorts of interesting quotes and we'll put one of them on a small plaque. We will engrave it with a laser. On the first pass we create the ornament. It comes out to be very rich, but it is not what we need. We wrap it with sandpaper and it gets a little faded. We polish it up with laser cleaning. After that we engrave the actual quart. Behind the scenes I covered the plaque with transparent varnish. And while it dries we will cover the wood with oil. We also attach the handle with the anaerobic glue. We fix the whole mechanism in its place. And finally glue the plaque. You can look up the translation of this quote from Haydn online yourself. I like the idea of a pattern under the text. It looks nice, but not flashy. The final product came out. Well, as they say, everybody has different tastes. I was a little worried about the gap with the drum, but it turned out to be minimal and will not affect the sound. The only big issue is that the melody needs to be written with notes arranged more sparsely. Otherwise, the T's in such places get quiet by touching the adjacent pin and it distorts the sound and the drum needs to be remade. For now, let's hear what we got. There are some things to work on, but overall we got the desired result. Bye!